Things that go bump in the night. Things that tap, tap, tap on the door in the middle of the night too. Would you dare get up and investigate? <laughs> no, nor would I. Some things are best left unchecked. Which is perhaps the moral of tonight's story. Well, my dear friends, sit back and relax with your favorite drink. Because now it's time to listen. This happened years ago, but it is still something that sticks with me. Now, this all happened like a sequence. You never know if things are supposed to happen for a reason, or if some unknown outside force influences it. But first, a little backstory. My friend, let's call her Jenny was a cheery, happy-go-lucky young woman. She rode one of those crotch rocket bikes <laughs> and loved riding it. Always up for new and exciting things. She took a job as a security guard for a casino I worked at. She was always that ray of sunshine that would bring you up if you were having a bad day. Even when she was feeling down, she always made it a point to make sure you were feeling better. After a year, she was promoted to a gaming officer. She was really happy, as this was an entry point to get into the upstairs offices. She would tell me often that if she got in, she would try to get me in with her. I worked on the floor, paying out jackpots and getting change for gamers. Not long after her promotion, she started acting funny. Not so much that people noticed it right away, but enough that I noticed it. She would come to work tired or come in late, but never said why. I noticed her attitude change as well. She was more jumpy and cautious than normal. One time, during a conversation we were having on the floor, she stopped and just, well, as I thought, stared at me. I realized after a little bit that she wasn't staring at me, but behind me. I turned, but saw nothing. She seemed to snap out of it after a bit and brushed it off as her losing track of thought. I never questioned it at the time. One day, she came in two hours late. Her superior was none too happy. He'd actually sought me out on the floor to see if I could get a hold of her. When she did come in, she looked the worse for wear. She was unkempt, with baggy red eyes, and she was jittery. When questioned by her superior, she just said it was a late night out. When she came to the floor, she pulled me aside and asked to meet up after work. We met at Denny's, and she proceeded to tell me what was going on. She was, as she put it, having some weird shit happen to her. It started subtly at first. A cold chill here, a noise there, nothing she couldn't explain away. But as time progressed, things got weirder. The chills got colder, the noises got louder and more frequent. Things were never where she left them. Then it started happening at work. Her desk was always rearranged from the way she'd left it. She thought that someone was messing with her, even voicing her concern, but nobody ever came forward. When she was walking the floor, she would feel a tap on her shoulder or a tug on her shirt with nobody around. 
When she'd walked to her office, which was located near the uniform room in a less trafficked area of the building, she always heard footsteps in line with hers, as if someone was walking right behind her. She was afraid to use the restrooms as well, if no one was with her. It was there, one day, she said, that she got scared real bad. Answering the call of nature, she'd just begun when, she said, there was a single light knock on the stall door. She'd announced herself in the stall when someone knocked again. This time, two of them, louder than the first. She'd said she was using it and to use another, when the door began to rattle, as if someone was jiggling the handle. And then, it stopped. She said she was about to get up when, to her horror, the sliding lock began to slowly move, unlocking itself. Jenny said she flung the door open. No one was there. When she got out of the stall, no one was in there at all. She was about to walk out when, turning towards the stalls, she said she saw a dark mass, humanoid looking, peeking out behind the furthest stall. She said she's seen it often since. The day she was really late, she said she was awoken from her sleep. It was night, her room was dark, and she couldn't speak nor move. She tried to, she told me, but couldn't. And she had a dreaded feeling, like she wasn't alone. The only thing she could move was her eyes, she recalled. And she happened to look up with them, seeing this humanoid mass looking right down at her. A faint glow where the eyes should be. She said she closed her eyes and was able to scream, finally gaining control of her body. She jumped out of bed and tried to turn on the light next to her bed, but it wouldn't work. The mass then started to come toward her, blocking her bedroom door. She told me she ran into the closet and shut it. The light in the closet worked. She said she was afraid to open the door. She heard it moving around the room. She fell asleep inside the closet, not waking till late in the morning. When she got dressed quickly and came in, hence her appearance. The last week of her life, she stayed with me. Despite the odd occurrences at work, nothing ever happened at my place. She was peaceful. She was sleeping and eating again, and on her days off, she reported nothing happening. The day she died was one of the strangest and scariest days of my life. It started with me going in as normal. I went in at eight, and Jenny came in an hour later. Things were pretty normal, and at twelve o'clock we had lunch. During lunch she told me she was going to go back to her place. The last week was pretty good, and she hoped whatever it was had finally left her alone. After that, we went back to our posts. About half an hour after lunch, my supervisor called me into the office and said one of the swing shift people had called out, so asked if I could pull a double shift. If I agreed, I could take the next day off or come in and get the overtime. So, I agreed. At around the same time, Jenny was asked to stay a few hours more, as one of her co-workers had suddenly gotten ill in the stomach and had had to go. So, she agreed. 
After that, I started getting the strangest feeling, like I was being watched. I couldn't explain it. I felt like someone was staring at me in empty parts of the floor. Jenny told me she'd started to feel like a weight was being lifted off her, but she also felt like I was in trouble somehow. She told me that something in the back of her head was telling her that someone was mad at me, like they really hated me. But she didn't know who, nor could she explain why she had that specific feeling. My second shift started, and her extra hours started in this way. Some of my co-workers reported feeling uneasy around me, while Jenny said that she was starting to become like her old self again. When Jenny was getting ready to end her shift at 11 in the evening that night, I took my final break to say goodbye, as I was getting out an hour after her. She said she felt free, for the first time in what seemed like forever. She wanted to enjoy her ride home. She told me she would text me when she'd made it. We hugged and I saw her off for what would be the last time. Needing to get back on the floor, I had the call of nature beckoning me, but I decided I could hold it, or so I thought. As I was making my rounds, that urge came at me strong, literally forcing me to make a mad rush to the employee restroom. I ran in and got to the nearest urinal. Relieved, I washed my hands and started to leave when a light, soft knock came from the direction of the stalls. There, peeking out from the farthest stall, was a black mass, humanoid looking with a soft glow where the eye should be. I blinked and it was gone. I stood frozen there, literally trying to rationalize if I'd seen something or not. I looked at the time on my phone. Twenty minutes had passed since Jenny left. I looked up and there it was again. Only this time, I got this really bad feeling that something was wrong and I bolted out of there. That image was burned into my memory and has been ever since. I called Jenny, but it went to voicemail. I finished the rest of my shift with a dreaded feeling. After work, I went home and tried calling again. Voicemail. I left her a message to get back to me ASAP. That dreaded feeling stayed with me till I fell asleep. My sister broke the news to me that morning. Her boyfriend was an EMT that responded to an accident call. He, Jenny and I, as well as my sister, had all gone to high school together. Being the one that took the call, he was shocked to find her off the road, about 40 feet to be exact, dead with a broken neck. She'd hit the safe card, this metal piece that curved with the road. He thought it weird that she would have landed 40 feet away seeing that the speed limit at the turn was only 20, and later it was determined that she hit it going only 10 miles an hour. No alcohol nor drugs were found in her system, so they thought that she probably fell asleep, and when she hit, she landed neck first and slid to a halt. Though, I was later told by my sister's boyfriend that when he got there, he didn't see anything that looked like she'd slid. The ground, he remembered, was undisturbed. This has haunted me for a while now. A few weeks ago I dreamed Jenny was talking to me. I couldn't hear her, 
and she had this blank, almost emotionless expression. She then points behind me and there it is, the thing I saw the day my friend died. Now, I'm by no means an artist or a painter. <laughs> I can hardly draw. But after that dream, I had to try to depict what I saw in the restroom all that time ago. This is the closest I've gotten it. Oh, one more thing I forgot to mention. When a time of death was given, it was around 11.20pm, the same time that I'd seen that thing. Update. It's been years now since I've been in that casino. I recently went back to my hometown, where it's located, and caught up with old friends who still work there. Apparently, that thing is following another friend of mine like it did Jenny. My friend suffered a nervous breakdown during his shift. The girl I spoke to said he was always acting weirder than normal culminating in his screaming and ranting about the shadow that won't leave him alone. Only a close few people know what Jenny went through and what I experienced, and the girl I spoke to was one of them. She mentioned that other things have been happening. My brother, who started working security there a few years ago, mentioned something creepy he once witnessed. The security team usually has a driver who drives around the property to make sure the parking areas and back part of the casino are safe. Behind the casino are these dumpster areas that the food and beverage and custodial teams use. Well, my brother told me that one night he went on a break. There's a patio area outside that employees use to sit outside or to have a smoke. There's a wall around it, but on the other side is the dumpsters. He went to the patio with one of the food and beverage girls for a smoke. During this time, they heard faint crying. At the same time, over his radio, he heard the truck driver calling in a female he'd spotted, crying in the corner of the dumpsters. He said the driver described her as short, with long black hair, blue sweater and jeans, with no shoes on. She was crouched in the corner, her back to him, sobbing. My brother, of course, being on the opposite side of the wall, could barely hear crying. Well. He then said the driver called it into surveillance. There were two cameras that pointed in that direction, one seeing that particular corner very well. After he called it in, surveillance got back to him asking him what he was talking about. This is how he put it. What are you calling in again? A female in the corner of the dumpster's crying. She's not responding to my calls. Okay. We see you. We don't see a girl. What do you mean? She's right in front of me. No, sir. All we see is you. No one else. Are you serious? You really don't see a girl right there. No, sir. If you're joking, then it's a bad one, not to mention a waste of our time. That's about the time my brother said the crying stopped, followed by a shriek from the driver and him burning rubber out of there. My brother went on to say that the driver was visibly shaken and trembling. When pressed by his supervisor about what had happened, he related that after surveillance said she wasn't there, she stopped crying and stood up her head falling back like it had no neck bones, and then started to walk towards him, but backwards with her head 
dangling side to side. He shrieked and got out of there. What was disturbing as well to my brother was that later, the driver said that when her head fell back, it had no face. I must say, some creepy shit is going on there. I wonder though, the way he described the girl, I wonder if it was Jenny. Even though she didn't die at the casino, I wonder if that thing is keeping her trapped there. Thanks for taking the time to drop by and watch this video. You know what would make me a happy doctor? Hitting that like button, leaving a comment, and subscribing to my channel. Go on, I've got plenty more stories to tell you. <laughs>